Hi friends, welcome back to my channel, Life as Tiff Knows It. Tiff here bringing you another whip and chat. Whip, if you're new to the concept, is it stands for work in progress, and chat is just me chatting about random different things. I am currently getting over a cold, so apologies in advance if I cough or sniffle or sound a little bit weird. That's my life right now. Thankfully, it's not as bad as it has been. I think I'm finally at the tail end of it. So yay, because it's not been fun. It has not been fun. And yeah, so hopefully you're doing well. Um, I'm currently working on a um, project for Drills and Chills. And it is called Playing with Fire by Roma Lerda. I'm trying to be better about <laughs> knowing author names. I have put on pause my other kit, the Chicago River kit, because of Drills and Chills, but I will be eager to get back to it because I've been really enjoying that canvas so far. Um, oops, that guy's upside down. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so this is a giant kit. I actually just did an unboxing of it. Go check it out if you're so inclined, but it is a 60 by 80 centimeter kit. I guess I just like to torture myself because I was the one who in a recent whip and chat said, I want to do a smaller kit for drills and chills and then look where I'm at. I blame my daughter. She really liked this image. She liked the kitty cat and I really think this is a cute image too. So not complaining too much, but also just thinking to myself, what the heck? I, um, I struggle with having enough time <laughs> and so here I am but that's okay I actually have spent a bit of time this weekend since I have been sick working on this it's been super satisfying and with the amount of color blocking it has it might go quicker than what I'm anticipating the kit that I did last year was a Chuck Penson which if you know Chuck Penson you know they're beautiful pieces of art, but holy confetti. So much confetti. Um, and so that really does slow a person down. <sighs> I have this giant boat, too, and I ha uh, that I got from Dreamer Designs. I'll show you it. It's very pretty. Um, I have mixed thoughts about it because the spout just is not working for pouring drills back in very well. Like I have had to pick up drills every time I shift um, colors. So I don't know if there's a trick to it and I just don't understand it, but I definitely am missing that memo, if you will. <laughs> um, what else is going on with diamond painting news? This is a pen I always use. It's so pretty in my opinion. Um, it is from Diamond Art Club. Diamond Art Club sells pens, if you didn't know. And I've really enjoyed using this pen. I am not a person that likes a ton of pens. Like, if someone were to gift me one, I'd be like, heck yeah, and I would love it. But I am not one to buy myself a ton of pens. Um, it's taken me a while to even get used to this one, but I do, I do very much love it. <laughs> uh, Let's see, I will talk about like more diamond painted related things. I mean, there's really not much with my channel that I feel like is changing. I've, I've been trying really hard to get caught up on, like I have this vision to schedule all of these videos in advance. And I thought I was more ahead of my scheduling schedule than I actually was. Oh, this is getting to be a hot mess. These are not lined up very well here. Um, and so I did spend a little bit of time scheduling videos, short YouTube shorts to release. And yeah, I, I'm like a week ahead and I do have a video coming out <clears throat> next Friday that is going to be just a mix of different things I've done. It's a... It's actually a hyperlapse of me kitting up this kit, which, holy cow, that was a beast. 
Like, there's so many drills in this kit. It's ridiculous. Um, and so, and there's 50, 59 colors, which is not, like, comparably, that's not that much. Maybe I'm just being a, a little bit of a, a diva with how I feel, but I think the kitting up process, now, granted, I had a four-year-old with me, what took, like, over an hour, hour and a half to do. But it's all condensed into 10 minutes, and then I thought that I would um, do a voiceover with just, like, some positive vibes, positive quotes with some, like, chill music just to switch it up. I was thinking of doing, like, a whip and chat that's a hyperlapse, but that would have, like, been such a long video to film and then have it be hyperlapse and then do a voiceover on top of it, so... I thought, no, no. Um, so, yeah, that's where I'm at. I definitely feel like I could be, like, a little bit more ahead on my journey of posting um, videos. But I'm trying to not feel discouraged. Um, they recently have had more subscribers, which, thank you. <laughs> I feel like I get subscribers mostly from my YouTube shorts. Uh that's been kind of what I've noticed. But you're watching this if you're hearing this. So thank you so much. It does mean a lot to me. Um, my goal is to have 500 subscribers by the end of 2023. And I think I can get that. I really think that's attainable. Um, so yeah, tell your friends. <laughs> <coughs> Sorry. This cough. I... I probably should be taking some NyQuil uh, just because if I take it too late, I feel drowsy in the morning. Um, ah, stay in place. I am not aligning these drills very well. I was doing a very nice job of this before filming, but they're kind of like going diagonal on me. Please stop. Please stop drills. A lot of times they'll straighten out for me, so we'll, we'll see what happens. We'll see. <laughs> Uh, that's what I get for doing a square. I actually really like square diamond paintings, but the placement's hard. Um, people who are naturally gifted at um, placing square diamonds, good on you, because it's, it's a challenge. I think it's pretty challenging anyway. Um, I think I already said this, but if I didn't, I hope you're doing well. Um, this... I'm filming this on Labor Day in the evening. I kind of feel like I procrastinated filming this for a couple of reasons. Number one, I just didn't have any time to myself this weekend. I've been with my daughter or sleeping to try to um, get rid of this cold. And it, yeah, it just feels like I haven't had any alone time, which I'm not going to lie. it's That's been a little hard. Um... And my husband is a very generous person and helped his friend, our friend, mutual friend, um, move this weekend, which I'm totally fine with. But it did, it's just kind of a weird weekend. Like, it, to be completely transparent, it was not a good weekend for me. Um, I think anytime I'm, like, recovering from being sick and... Ugh, this the other thing with this boat really randomly is it keeps drills are hiding in it like back here um was they saying sorry the other thing about this weekend there's just so many things that happened this weekend and being sick it just like my tolerance level is lower my emotions are high but I don't want to cry because then it makes my cold worse I'm actually like feeling like it's more of a sinus infection. I'm pretty prone to sinus infections. So anyway, not to make this like a super downer whip and chat, but um, yeah, this weekend just, I didn't feel great physically and there are a lot of things that happened that just like mentally just were sad. So um, the first was our guinea pig. Tyrant, who is named after a Pokemon character, um, has been sick and 
I don't know. I just hold so much guilt because last weekend is when I started getting sick. And we knew something was up with him. We thought that, like, he he had, like, mites because he had that a couple, like, a month ago. And I, I felt that we, we, he got rid of it. He wasn't itching. He seemed, um, more normal. And, like, now I'm wondering, like, was it something else, um, that was bothering him then? But because he seemed to be itching himself this week, this past weekend, um, not this weekend, but last weekend, we just, we had the medication and we thought he just needs another treatment of the mites medication. And I think part of it is I was just feeling tired and overwhelmed and I just was optimistic that's what it was. And the other thing too is we found this really good guinea pig vet years ago and loved her loved her loved her and then she moved <laughs> she moved to another state and since then the place that we normally go to for like vet appointments they i hate to say it but they've really dropped the ball they don't ever have an appointment slot when we need it <laughs> like even being proactive like i understand they're busy and they you know like it's just really hard when you have a very exotic pet and there's only specific people you trust with handling your pet. And that probably for me comes from a place of trauma because I had a really bad, bad experience a couple years ago with a guinea pig that I took to just a normal like pet hospital and I just felt they did everything wrong and then the guinea pig died and they had the audacity to, even if it was true, like, don't tell me, like, um, they said that it, part of the reason he died was because I brought him in because it, the, the experience was so stressful and that sometimes it's better to just keep your guinea pigs at home because they can't handle the stress of a pet hospital and it felt so like I don't know it just it made me feel terrible like I'm sure <coughs> excuse me I'm sure that the that guinea pig had so many health problems back then that if I wouldn't have brought him in he would have died um but like the fact that they, they told me that, like, I was the problem, just, like, has, obviously, I haven't let go of it, and I, I, I wish I could. I don't like feeling this way. But, so, I have that in the back of my mind, that experience, and so, I didn't want to, like, take in our guinea pig prematurely to a place I've never been because when I called the place that we usually go to, they basically, they said, we have no appointments. If it's that urgent, you need to go here. And I've never been to this place before and it just scared me. I just, I don't want to ever cause harm to my pets. Um, and it felt like I caused harm by taking my guinea pig to that place long ago it wasn't the same place but I was worried like some like how you treat a guinea pig is so different than what you do to treat a um a dog or a cat like um it's just different you need to be specialized so we didn't take him in and I thought he was doing better and then this weekend things took a turn for the worst and he just wasn't acting himself. Like, he was still, like, moving around and seemed, like, relatively okay. But he wasn't eating, which if a guinea pig doesn't eat, that's really bad. Like, they can, they'll just, they can just die. And so I took the chance. I took him to this place. And they were pretty nice. They, I have no qualms against how they were they they triaged him but they basically told me he has bronchitis 
or pneumonia and an upper and lower tract infection and that there's a chance he won't pull through and to save him we'd have to hospitalize him for days and it would and it wasn't looking good and so it's just like such a hard um decision when you're when I was feeling really like physically ill like I was coughing like crazy my nose was running like I just I don't feel like I physically um like my body's failing me and have the doctor just lay it out like that and give me pricing options and like and it wasn't like extreme what they were planning to do like put the catheter on this poor guinea pig and be in an oxygen tank and have fluids running through him and um like all this medication and and then she just and she basically said and it might not work and then the the that was all before i even knew the cost of it and like it would have cost five thousand dollars and I love my guinea pig so much. I love him and I feel so bad. But I just, I didn't go for that option. I just, I felt like, <sighs> this is getting really deep. But like, I think that having a pet, you, you, the, the crossroads you come to when you have to choose to let them go is... Um, are you keeping them alive for you or are you keeping them alive because they have, because of like, there's a quality of life that can happen afterward. And Tyrone was an older piggy. Like he's, they only lived to be between five and seven and he was six and he seemed miserable and it just felt like so overwhelming to put him through all that stuff just for there to be a chance that maybe he'd make it. And I just, I chose to just put him to sleep. And it's just, it was an awful, awful time because I just, I feel so much guilt because I don't know. Like, I, I guess, like, I used to be that person that would to go to any extent to keep a pet alive, just even if it was a day longer. But I, I don't think I'm that person anymore because I don't, I don't want to see a pet suffer and go through something really traumatic um, just to die. And that's, that's what happened like years ago when I took the guinea pig in to the vet and then he, he died right in front of me and they gave him CPR and it was... It's super traumatic. Um, and so, yeah, that was just so hard. It was really hard to make that decision. And I hope I made the right one. I, I feel so bad that I didn't take him in last weekend. And I just assumed I knew what the problem was because I was so afraid of taking him in. And having that backfire on me. And of course, the irony is, is not taking him in was exactly the thing that backfired on me. But I'm trying to get myself grace and remind myself that hindsight's 2020. Um, I was trying to take care of him the best I could. And there's no way I would have known that he had pneumonia. Like, I never would want a guinea pig to have that. You know, and I think it's funny that I'm sick with a respiratory infection at the same time. So I just wasn't physically there to, like, notice. Like, it just, I don't know. It just, life is just ironic sometimes. <laughs> but I'm trying to be at peace with it. I'm trying to um, let go of feeling guilty. I'm tired of feeling bad about myself or the decisions that I make. <sighs> and then there's just been like a lot of deaths lately. Death, I definitely feel like comes in waves. Celebrity deaths. I mean, Jimmy Buffett died, which I'm not 
terribly attached to Jimmy Buffett, but there are two celebrity deaths that really have bummed me out. Uh, the first is Bob Barker. <laughs> I don't know if there's any other um, Price is Right fans, but I definitely am one. And he was, I mean, he lived a long life. 99 years old, like, you can't do better than that. Like, I'm not, like... I don't even know if I, I, I'm bummed, I'm sad, but like, I understand, you know, like what else is there? <laughs> you know, there's nothing, not a better case scenario in my opinion. I'm hoping his quality of life was good for sure, you know, but one thing that was really interesting that I saw on a YouTube or a Facebook post was this like coincidences with Bob Barker's death um, that he lived to be 99, which is the closest you could get to 100 without going over, which if you are a, if you watch Price is Right, like that's the whole, whole thing for the final round. <laughs> and then he always was a proponent of always get your pets spayed and neutered and he died on National Dog Day. You know, like, well played, Bob. Well played. That's kind of what I thought. Um, so that didn't really, like, it just was significant to me. Like, I feel, sometimes I feel really close to celebrities. They play, like, um, a role in your life. Like, The Price is Right, like, symbolizes a lot to me. It symbolizes my childhood in a way. Like, I feel like my mom always watched The Price is Right before her soap operas came on. And I remember as a kid watching it and like I remember always being when I was sick at home, I would watch The Price is Right. Um, so, and I know there's been a new host forever, but I don't have cable. So I don't watch the Drew Carey Price is Right often. Although when I have, Drew Carey does a nice job too. But <laughs> I don't know. It's just, it's, Yeah. I'm, I'm a very sensitive person and I struggle sometimes with celebrity deaths. And the person that died today that was a celebrity has kind of hit me hard. Um, it's the lead singer of Smash Mouth, which if you don't know who Smash Mouth is, they were very big in the nine, late 90s, early 2000s. Um, I always figured like classified them as a rock band but they're more pop and this lead singer's name is Steve Harwell and I will never I have to tell a story about Steve Harwell um uh my first concert of like that I would classify as a cool concert like ro like a rock concert even though you know like I said rock that's questionable but at the time I felt like they were super cool they were super hip they said the f word like they were legitimate like this is cool um they were the first concert I went to and went to it with my dad and and they came to like where I live like my hometown and the the setup for it it's more of like a rodeo stadium and there was options, like, to be down on the floor, like a normal concert, you know. And then there was all these, like, raised bleacher chairs around the arena, kind of like a football stadium. That's really what it was like. My dad and I were in the back of the stadium, and we were, like alone everybody they must not have been very popular like it must have been a little bit past their heyday because like the concert was very much not sold out like at all but we were like alone in the bleachers and I had like glow sticks and I just thought it was so cool and my dad and I all like both really love the song all star um like all star always reminds me of my dad and just like him being so encouraging to me as a teenager or a preteen, like, to just, like, go and do the things you want to do in life. And I can do anything I want. Like, a super positive vibe with a super positive song. And it was, like, a really, 
monumental experience to be at this concert. And I swear on my life, one of the coolest moments I've ever had, like, <laughs> I thought so at the time, and I still think it's so cool, because I've never had this happen at a concert, is he, the lead singer, Steve Harwell, looked into the audience and said, this song is dedicated to, to the girl in the back wearing black, and I had a black shirt on, who's dancing. And pointed right at me. And there was no way it was anybody else. Like it was just me and my dad. Back there in the bleachers alone. And he dedicated a song to me. And it was like the most special moment. It was so cool. And it like launched me into having a huge crush. On Steve Harwell. And like loving the band even more. And something that still sticks with me. Is a lot of times. I, what, the way it usually works with music is I usually like a band enough to go to a concert and then the concert catapults me into this new layer of loving the artist. Like I just become hyper-focused on them and I want to listen to more of their music or I'm trying to like find songs I heard at the concert but I never heard of and I want to know their name, like all the things <laughs> and that was how it was with Smash Mouth. And I was, I bought all their albums. If I could have found a Smash Mouth poster, I'm sure I would have hung it in my room. Like people in middle school knew how much I love Smash Mouth. And Steve Harwell. And how, like, you know, like little silly, like crush things. Like, I want to grow up and marry Steve Harwell. And all, you know, goofy, goofy things. And... So, I know that he went down, like, a not-so-good path. And I remember being really sad when I heard about that. Like, he was booed off of a stage or he's struggled with alcohol abuse. Which is, it's hard, I think, in general, when someone you admire and you have a crush on, you recognize that they're not perfect. And... I, rec I realized that as an adult. It wasn't that long ago. It was like maybe, I don't know, four or five years ago. But the fact that he died today, it, do it makes me sad. It does. So it's been a rough weekend. I'm not, I don't know. The combination of Tyrant and this and being sick and then like, just like not... I don't know, like, it's just been, my routine's been thrown off. I'm so, I'm so glad just to have um, a very supportive husband. And I don't fault him for being gone this weekend, but I really missed him this weekend. That sounds super cheesy. Um, and my daughter is so cute and sometimes drives me so crazy. <laughs> Especially when I'm sick, I just, it's hard to recover from a cold when you are a parent. <laughs> but I'm not trying to complain. Um, there's so much I'm really grateful for, to be honest. Like, um, I don't know. Like, I see the, the leaves outside. It's dark out, but I see the leaves, and it's been beautiful weather. I'm so glad I had an extra long weekend to recover from being sick. Um, I, I'm so grateful, and I just, I, moments like this make me really appreciate life and get super cheesy and um, emotional, but yeah. Um, what else? I'm looking at my notes now. Make sure I kind of covered everything. One thing I don't think I, I said about, like, Tyrant, about the guinea pigs, is I feel that, like, it's, it's hard being a pet owner. <laughs> Especially to pets who have a short lifespan. Um, I think... I've always really felt attached to guinea pigs because 
I don't know. Part of me just felt like they are underrated. <laughs> Which is funny because I think that's why I really like Steve Harwell and I liked Smash Mouth is I feel this like need to advocate for people or things that I don't think get enough credit. <laughs> and like that's how I feel about guinea pigs and that's probably why I love them so much. But <sighs> sometimes... This is hard to say out loud, but I question if for me personally, it's worth being a guinea pig owner because I care too much and I want so badly to feel that I'm a really good <laughs> guinea pig owner. And ever since I've been a mom, I just... I don't feel like I give my pets the time that they deserve. And please don't take it as like I'm neglectful to my guinea pigs. I don't feel like it's that. I just feel like I'm not as good of a pet owner as I used to be. Because I don't have the time that I used to have to dedicate towards being a guinea pig mom and that's because life happens and I'm not frustrated by it I'm just I'm questioning if it's worth it because too I feel so heartbroken when they pass away <laughs> I don't know if anyone else has ever felt that way that like it like not enjoying or like contemplating not having pets anymore not because you don't care, but because you care too much. <laughs> but that's kind of how I feel right now. You know, and one thing that's so cool that I don't... I think I mentioned on the channel before, but I don't know. It's a cool story. Since I'm talking about these monumental moments in my life that have this coolness factor. Ironically, a lot of like this thing with Tyrant dying... <laughs> is linked to like the smash mouth thing in a way because my other claim to fame i mean i tell most people in my personal life the smash mouth story about how steve harwell dedicated a song to me and then i also mention the time that our guinea pigs were in a music video like a full produced music video and that's absolutely true and it's like so funny the way that came about like, also, around the time I got Tyrant, it, um, we, Bill, my husband's cousin had a friend whose brother, <coughs> <coughs> so sorry, excuse me, um, is a DJ named Claude Von Stroke. I had not heard of Clon Bod and Stroke before this. He actually kind of looks like Steve Harwell in a weird way. <laughs> um, he was in in the business of making, like, wanting a music video done. And his sister produced mu music videos and had always wanted to do a music video with guinea pigs. And asked um, my husband's cousin, hey, do you know anyone with guinea pigs? And we did. I mean, they did. It was us. So our guinea pigs auditioned for the part, which really was me just sending a video of them in their cages, in their natural habitats. And we moved forward with this amazing experience of just like two whole days of the guinea pigs being under bright lights. I'm sure it was like a little bit blind, not blinding for them, but you know, a little bit out of the norm. They got used to it. And they got to just eat treats the whole time. And I'll link the music video um, in the description box. But it is the cutest music video. And Tyrant, I think, just symbolizes for me a lot of change in my life. Because he was the last guinea pig from that music video alive. And, you know, it represents me as a guinea pig mom 
before being a parent and after. And, you know, I, I always want to have guinea pigs, but <laughs> I don't know. It's just something I've been thinking a lot about is, yeah, is if it's really worth it um, right now in my life to own guinea pigs. Of course, I'm going to keep, I have two skinny pigs that I love dearly and I'm not, they're not going anywhere and they are spoiled and maybe that's part of this too as I feel some guilt because Denise really likes the skinny pigs and never really connected well with Tyrant and so like, yeah, <laughs> I'm just saying that I think I'm going to think twice before I go get another guinea pig. And I'm going to laugh when the universe just has a guinea pig waiting for me and throws it in my lap. But we'll see. Check out the music video if you want to see a really cute, <laughs> fun music video. And um, I think I'm going to leave it with a quote that kind of I thought was really helpful for me to play devil's advocate with how I'm feeling about guinea pig ownership and it's about grief and it says the risk of love is loss and the price of loss is grief but the pain of grief is only a shadow when compared with the pain of never risking love and I guess that's kind of where I'm at is that I really love things deeply and sometimes I feel like that's a big fault of mine and sometimes I think it's a strength but right now I just feel kind of hurt <laughs> and I'm again I'm not trying to like make me the victim or anything I'm so grateful and think there's so many things going well but I also want to validate my own feelings and be genuine with you so thank you for listening to me ramble I think I'm going to end this whip and chat here thanks so much for joining me as always, liking, commenting, subscribing, super appreciative of that. And I'll see you in next week's Whip and Chat. Bye. Tell me.